Hi, Assalamualaikum. Good afternoon, good evening. Good afternoon, good Sam. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Global Teacher Conversation. Um, I see a few um, familiar faces. And I see a few more uh, faces that we missed uh, last week That's, uh, that managed to come this week. Uh, welcome back. Um, for those who haven't renamed yourself yet, you can go to participate and rename yourself with country and then underscore with your name. Um, and type in the chat, what is your favorite movie or drama you'd like to recommend to everyone to watch? Okay. And plus points if you recommend a movie or drama from your own country. Okay. Welcome to Global Teacher Conversation. A few Zoom norms. Um, I'd appreciate it if you mute, if you're not speaking, not because we don't want to hear your voices. Um, it's so that we don't have any clashing sounds and um, we're not disturbing other friends to and, and help them to listen in better. Uh, be present, switch on your video whenever possible. And because we're having conversation, of course, we want to see your lovely faces. So please switch on your videos. <laughs> yes, you're lovely, Haja. And participate actively. Don't be shy. Um, everyone here is the same. No one here is above or uh, below anybody. So don't be shy and, and participate actively, OK? Right, so GTC have three pillar principles that we all stand by. Number one is we being respectful. People here come from all sorts of walk of life and we have different experiences. We have different um, qualifications. However, being the people that we are, we are mindful of how we speak, how we behave and how we communicate with each other. And we're also supportive. We know that no one here have English as their first language. So you know how hard and difficult it is for you. So it is also difficult for other people. So let's give space and time for our conversation partners to share and deliver what they want to say and be supportive of that. And of course, show interest, ask and ask questions. This is how you show interest to people um, when they tell you stories and share about their days. And make sure you ask questions as well. And, and don't be shy to answer questions from your friends. A little bit of agenda of what we're going to have today. So this is the first general session that is also an industry crossover session. So we'll have some activities in the plenary in a bit, and then we will have a plenary sharing industry crossover uh, by our friends at the Aris Academy, the production team. And then followed by an open Q&A session, you can ask them questions. Um, and even before that, you can put in the chat. Then there will be a sharing space by our very own Divya and Ayati. And we'll have a conversation together with people from production team. Um, and then some announcement for the time and closing. That's it for tonight. Right. Let's see if we have some new members here. Uh, right. I see Tan, I think Tan, you joined a little bit later last week, right? Tan, perhaps you want to say hi to everybody. Tell us your name, country where you're from, one subject that you teach, and your student's age. Oh, can you see me? Yes, yes, we can hear hi, you. Hi, uh, everyone. My name is uh, Tan. I'm from Malaysia. Um, I'm teaching mathematics uh, in second, secondary school. And my students are 13 years old to 14 years old. Uh, thank, thank you. Oh. All right, cool, cool. Thank you, Tan. All right, let's move on to Chanta. Hey, Chanta, perhaps you can tell us the name, your country, one subject that you teach, and your student's age. Hi, Chanta. Hi, Chanta. 
And Chanda, you're there? You're muted. Yeah. Oh, we cannot hear you, Chanda. About now? Ah, yes. Perfect. Okay. All right. Okay. My name is Chanta Kumari. Uh, can call me as Chanta. And uh, I'm from Malaysia teaching mathematics for secondary schools. Uh, I'm my students are 15 and 16 years old. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. thank you. All right. Thank you, Chanta. We have Fatima. Fatima, you want to say hi? Come again. Fatima. We have Fatima. Okay. Um, sorry, because I'm. <laughs> Um, in a car, but it's okay. Uh, I will introduce myself. And it's Fatima Mulyadi. Uh, I'm from Malaysia now, currently teaching in Malacca. And I'm teaching science, um, year, um, uh, year, 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 year four to, to year six. Okay, 60. Uh, oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry because I'm. I don't know if you can, you all can hear me or not because my line is quite unstable right now because I'm moving in a car. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I think that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Fatima. Do you prefer us to call you Fatima or Mulyati? Uh, you can call me Fatima. All right. Cool. Cool. And the <laughs> Uh, my short name is me. <laughs> ah, okay, cool, 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 cool. All right. all right, welcome to all these new members. I hope you guys can continue to all our continuous um sessions for the next one. Um, right. Okay, let's do some activities. I know all of us in the classroom have tried a lot of things to make sure our students are engaged, to try new things to get our students to, to learn new concepts and new knowledge, right? So perhaps you can all type in the chat, right? What was one thing you have done in your classroom that was probably unusual compared to your daily teaching style? I want to see some answers in the chat. What's one thing you have done in your classroom? Or if, if you don't have a classroom, some, some people that you have teach probably. was probably unusual or a little bit, say, out of the ordinary. I shot the creative photo competition. Okay. What about everyone else? Jensen's did social emotional learning. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about the others? Creative teaching for writing. Mm. And maybe you want to tell us what RWR stands for. Okay, <clears throat> RWR stands for a run, right, a read, run, right, a run. Read, read write, write, run. Run, yeah. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, so oh. they will be seated in groups of uh -huh. four. Mm -hmm. So uh, they will have a paper. So I'll give them the, the title of the, I mean, let's say it's a, uh, a simple email writing. So they, okay, now introduction. So they have all have to put their heads together and they have to read what is that first? What what you ask, what, what letter is that? To whom and what? So they have to read. After that, they have to write. So all, all of them have to take turns to write. After that, they have to, they have to, after writing, they have to write. So A will go to B, B will. So one student, the first student, there are four, so I numbered them as one, two, three, four. The first student, all the first ones will run to the, the next one. That's such yeah. an activity. So, yeah, I, I shared this in GTC one. Yes, yes, yeah. you did. All right, cool, cool, cool. Thank yeah. you. And so 
Who is it? Oh, Kelly said, I let my students practice mindful breathing before lessons. So that's social emotional learning. Uh, stop the class suddenly and guiding students to the library because they said the, this lesson was boring. Lord, okay. That's cool as well. So Divya mentioned about making a library corner and, and letting students manage library. Oh, that's a, that's a, a creative way to uh, make the student practice accountability and also responsibility, like shared responsibility. Hmm. Sharing sessions. Okay. Visual notes in science. Ah, draw alongside simple notes. Cool. This are, if you guys are looking into the, the chat as I'm doing right now, you can see all these wonderful, wonderful ideas. All right. Let me stop sharing a bit before I share. Hey guys. I also want to share with you one thing that I found on the internet about um, doing something unusual as a teacher. Okay. Let's watch how this teacher used pop song to teach multiplication for table A. said this this particular video made made him become a safety oh, you're so easy man <laughs> all right has anyone here have ever tried um lyric swap lyric swap is when you um change a popular song or a popular song into a lesson like like this one if you have tried it, maybe you can put it in the chat or, or maybe you can just give some reaction or your friend at your school or any one of your friends have done it. Oh, no problem, no problem, Fatima. No worries. Okay, but okay, my second question is, any one of you want to try Lyric Swap after you have watched this? Oh, and want to try it. Okay, perhaps we will we will hear some Siti Nahaliza lyrics so of this. I shall. So. Okay, all right, cool, cool. I love I love this positive attempt at new things here. All right. So, uh, okay, that's enough Swifties. All right. Today, um, we're joined by the uh, production team at Aris Academy. So Aris Academy is one of the social enterprise um, for education in Malaysia. So uh, friends at the production team in Aris Academy are also my uh, dear friends of mine. So the team are here to um, basically tell their stories, um, share with you their journey to learning and, and what what have what is it that they actually do being production team at RS Academy? So um, without further ado, I would like to invite the team to do a plenary sharing with all of us here. Hello, hello. Testing can you guys hear me? Okay, yeah, all right, nice. Okay, wait, I'll share my screen first. Hold on.
Okay. All right. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, my name is Amiri. I am from the video production team, uh, uh, part of the video production team in Arus Academy. Um, but before we start, I just want to say thank you to uh, Global Teacher Conversation for inviting us and also Atika Naze for inviting us for this um, Saturday night. Uh, it's night here in Malaysia, uh, wherever you guys are as well. I just want to say thank you so much for inviting us here to give uh, our sharings on what we do in the team and how we learn as a team um, and being able to share this in front of all you as team uh, educators. So essentially, uh, as I said, my name is Amiri and this is essentially what we have been doing for the past, I would say two years. So we focus more on creating content for the, for the organization, uh, which is content is generally based on education. So our content focus strongly on storytelling because we believe that storytelling is a big part in making sure that you give impact and it's a big part in making sure that you touch the audience. And once an audience is touched by your videos, by your stories, uh, they will possibly be impacted by it as well. So who are we? Uh, so before we start, I just want to show you guys uh, what is Arus Academy. Uh, Atika did just say just now a bit about Arus Academy. We are a social enterprise that empowers students to problem solvers through engaging exciting experiential learning adventures to inspire them to create better future for all. So essentially, Arus Academy is a, we provide education for students um, as an after school program, um, which covers, we create different literacies like digital literacy, media literacy, and also financial literacy. Um, ultimately, we want to we want to equip students uh, with 21st century skill sets so that they're ready for the future, especially with um, uh, in, in a few decades or even now artificial intelligence on the rise. So these are the things that we want to sort of uh, prepare the students and also teachers as well. So these are the founders of Arus Academy. Um, from, the, from the left is Daniel Russell, David Cha, Alina Ame, Felicia Yun. So these are teachers. They were teachers before they started Arus Academy. Um, they have a passion for teaching. They're still passionate about teaching and they will always be passionate about teaching. And I'm sure everyone in here is always passionate about teaching as you guys are educators. Um, but they founded Arus Academy about nine years ago. So next year we are going to a decade of, of Arus Academy. And they, we have two headquarters in Arus, uh, in Malaysia, which is in Penang and Kuala Lumpur. So in Penang, we sort of um, provide education that's more focused on digital literacy, robotics and programming. So in Penang, um, we teach students on robotics and not just about how and what to build the robots, uh, but also why they're doing it to focus on creating solutions to a problem. And in Kuala Lumpur, we focus more on undocumented students. So in undocumented students, um, we provide them education platform uh, as they have the restriction to go to public, in public schools. So that's what we provide in Kuala Lumpur. And these students have been taught through project-based learning. Like last, last semester we did, the students did uh, what we call art and waste management team. So the students had to like um, find climate issues, problems around KL. So for example, some students did fast fashion industry, some did about uh, the rivers in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur that's been clogged and it affects the natural habitat. And then they turned that into art. So that was so interesting. The students just found it so inspiring and they love learning about it. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're trying to showcase in Arus. And these are some things that we do outside of the school as well. We have, uh, finite, like I said, we do other programs. Uh, recently we did uh, the, the picture in the middle with the orange, it looks a bit orange. That one is fun for life. So we do uh, financial literacy programs, digital literacy programs, and also um, media literacy programs. But what is our role um, in Arus Academy? So uh, we have this production team, which consists of me. Uh, there's Nakib here. Nakib, he's actually driving. And I hope you're driving safely, Nakib. <laughs> and there's Haja also. Uh, so there's another two, which is Aviza and Eli. So we are the production team. Uh, our main purpose in Arus is to serve, uh, create content creation, create content to various social media platforms of which this content focuses on inspiring audiences in the education sector. So as I said, mentioned earlier, we focus heavily on storytelling uh, because we want to, we feel that that is the most impactful way to, to reach your story to the audience. So these are just some of the things that we've done. This is just a fraction of the things that we've done over the past two years. Um, education series, corporate branding, event coverages, and we've been doing documentaries. Uh, so this is something that we are focusing more on. 
So, uh, for example, this year, early this year, we first we released our first full length documentary, which is about um, which covers financial literacy. Uh, we follow nine students in their journey in one of our financial literacy competition. So, in this competition, students are, if anyone has seen Shark Tank, that's the concept of it. So, these students they pitch to um, a panel of judges their financial and business plan. So, the winner, the ones that pitch the best, wins the competition and they get prizes. So in this documentary, we focus on the journey of the student, the struggles, the achievements, and the learnings that they've gone through, and also how they become aware, self-aware about financial literacy. And we also focus on the teachers, how they guide the, the students, and, and, and also the parents, how they guide their sons and, and daughters as well. So backtrack a bit, the production team, Okay, I'm going to get into this uh, later. So just a bit of history of how we started and, and how much we lacked experience when we started the, the, the team because none of us had any idea what we were doing. So we are basically learners as we go. And I think the number one educator for us is YouTube. So that is our, our best, best teacher uh, in this sense. Okay. Um, so this is a documentary, uh, our documentary that I said mentioned earlier that uh, this is a trailer for it, so you can have a look. Is the audio on? No, it's not. I think you need oh, wait, to wait, share again with the tape. Ah, yes, yeah, share sound. Okay, wait. Okay, wow. Duit ni satu benda yang boleh mendatangkan keburukan dan kebaikan. Jika baik digunakan wang itu, maka baiklah kibatnya. Jika tidak, sebaliknya. Mereka sampai ke Cerang Kemuncak ni, mereka pulang dengan rasa inspired to do more dan tahu dan faham kepentingan mereka menguasai kemenangan kewangan. Ramai kata matematik itu susah, tapi tidak bagi saya. Jangan takut belajar bahasa wang, tapi jangan biar wang menguasai diri kita. After the bengkel, it's like yes, money is important. But then I also saw videos of how money can you know, corrupt people, but also how it can bring people together. Sebenarnya kita perlu tahu kewangan ni daripada kita seawal usia. Maksudnya kita tak terlampau banyak tentang perbelanjaan yang sia-sia dan kita lebih utamakan tentang perbelanjaan yang ikut keperluan kita. Setiap peserta diberi masa 4 minit untuk pembentangan dan 2 minit untuk sesi soal jawab bersama panel juri. Okay, wait, hold on. I need to share again. Sorry, sorry. Can I share this wrong screen? Okay, here you go. Okay, so yes, that was um the that was the documentary that we did last this year. Um, so this documentary was um premiered privately in G, uh, GSC in Cinema Malaysia. So uh, you guys can have a look. I think maybe Naki or Haja can send the link in 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 the in the chat for the full doc, for the full documentary. Hold on. Oh man. Okay. So this is the team. This is the team. We're a very small team. Uh, we only have five people, which is me on the left, uh, Nakib uh, next to me, and then it's uh, Habiza, Eli, and Haja, eh, Haja and Eli, sorry, okay? So these are the team. Um, so we're very inexperienced in a way because um, none of us comes from a film background, uh, especially uh, bottom left, Hafiza. Hafiza comes from a, I would say, interior design background, um, and bottom right, Haja comes from a law background. And only Nakib, me, and Eli comes from mass communication, which we touch a bit here and there about how to shoot videos, but we're never, never just really focusing on it fully. So we, we don't really have that much experience in terms of 
video production. So when we started two years ago, um, I I was I I I, I entered Arus and I was given the task to create a team, a team that can create videos with me. So at that point, it was my first time. I I joined Arus uh, after my internship. So I didn't really have any idea how I was supposed to sort of lead a team and have um and and without having enough experience in terms of skills, that kind of pulled me back a bit, thinking that whether I can do it or not. But um, we sort of just uh, learn a lot along the way. We trial and error here and there. And I think the biggest part of our success as a team is because we are all eager learners. And I think that's very important. And I've been telling the team that I'm very grateful to have a team that's full of, there's always learning, there's always just want to do the best and not afraid to make failures. And I think that's the biggest part of our success is just being okay with failures because we see failures as a way to, um, to improve. So yeah, that's the team, that's the history a bit. Um, so we're not coming from a film background, so we don't really have much experience prior to ours. So seeing education as inspiring. So when we shoot videos, when we shoot videos for uh, documentaries or social media, we are always constantly in communication with teachers and students. And these are just such an inspiring uh, connection and communication that we have with them. Because when we shoot, um, we often think that when we shoot, we just go there, shoot, and we go home. But essentially, we are connecting to the, with the teacher and the students in a level where we get to understand how hard it is to be an educator, how how hard it is to to, to teach a student. Uh, but we also should we feel a lot grateful and appreciative of 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 teachers and, and and students as well. So there's a lot of stories being told that we've seen, and and some of it, for example, is this teacher. Uh, this teacher is in Sabah. Uh, Zaba is a state in the foreigner side of Malaysia. So she's a teacher that provides education for undocumented students. Uh, unfortunately, the school does not have any electricity. So the school has not had electricity for three years. And um, the teacher had to teach, usually teaches with offline materials. And must be closed before nightfall because if it's night, and it becomes really dark. So when we arrived here, we had a program last year uh, where we shoot a short documentary on digital literacy and the issues surrounding um, learning with offline materials. So we provided the certain uh, schools, schools that needed it, we provided with offline materials, so offline cards. So these cards are, are cards that are related to HTML, SQL, Python, and also Microbit. So these cards were given to them so that these students can learn uh, programming and robotics without having any online materials. So going to the school, as you can see on the top right picture, um, that is actually the school as a drone shot. Um, you can see that just one small house in 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 the jungle there, in the in the forest there. So it was uh, it was it it brought a, a sense of gratitude to us and also show us that there's a lot more to be done. Um, and then another one is a student in deep rural Sarawak, another state of Borneo, Malaysia. Um, so this student, students in this school can only travel to school by sampan. So sampan is a like a small boat. Um, as you can see in the picture, there is a very small boat that's low. Um, that's probably the size, just a bit wider than your shoulders. Um, and it's quite unstable. It's quite scary if you're going there on it for the first time, like we did. So when we did this um, documentary, we found out that the student in the interview um, would take her two days to travel back home um, from school. So she's, she goes to the school and she stays there as a, board in, as a boarding school. But when she wants to go back, when it's holiday, she would take her two days. So she would travel by boat, spend a day here, there, somewhere to, to sleep and then go back and then and reach the home in two days. So that just made us realize that, you know, sometimes we take great education for granted and, and, and some students, they go a long way just to get education, just to be in a classroom. And that really affected us when we when we went there. It really made us feel uh, saddened by the 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 state that that was that was that we was able to see there. Um, yeah. And lastly, this is uh, uh, I'm not trying to be biased because it's Arus Academy, uh, but it is a story about alumni of Arus Academy. Uh, so this is a recent video that we're doing. Uh, so we want to tell the story of those that were the first batch of Arus. So Arus is nine years, as I said. Arus has been around for nine years. So these are the students that was first ever enrollment in Arus. So they are about 24, 25 years old now. And um, for example, this the boy uh, on the top left, 
um, his name is Chia Ching. The Chia Ching, when he joined, before he joined Arus, he had no vision at all of what he wanted to do after school. He was completely just, he didn't know what to do. Um, his only answer at that point to me when I asked him was that he wanted to, um, the only vision he could see is to go work at Pasar Malam or like night market and help his mother. But once he joined Arus, he was immediately passionate about robotics and programming. And now he's a software engineer working in a tech company. So you asked him, what would, how, how, what would your life be had you not come across Arus? And he said, yeah, I would have probably worked in a night market. And for example, like Gayatri on the, bot, on the top right, uh, bottom right, the girl. So she was, before she joined Arus, she was uh, an introvert person. She was shy. Um, if, you had, if you had been in the same room with us when we were interviewing her, you would not believe that she was shy or introvert before. But when she joined Arus, she was just completely changed. She felt more confident. Um, she could express herself freely. And now she's uh, working in private relations, studying psychology, and also just talking about her company to other people. Um, so the, the idea of the story here is to show that you know, education can really change the life of a person. And, and that teachers play a big role and, and teachers play a big role in shaping someone's life. And it was a very emotional story that we did and something that we really realized that how much we, we are doing for Arus. Arus is just a part of a small part of the education world that is changing lives of other people. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much time I have, but I think I've went overboard. But um, yeah, there are so many other stories that we have. Uh, but you can also follow us and check us out on our website, uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and uh, YouTube to see some of the other stories that we have. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Amiri. Uh, it's okay. Um, so these are amazing stories. Thank you so much uh, for sharing this with us. And uh, one of the things that like, strikes me the most uh, was about their journey to learning, but how uh, he said, even though we know nothing, we try not to be so scared about the fact that we don't know, but instead, we make sure that we, we become so eager to learn that we go out and find out what it is that we need to know. And the fact that we continuously learning is what, you know, keep us on the road for sometimes until now. So, right. I wanna remove things here. All right. So, uh, before we go to Q and A session, I know you guys already have the questions that you would like to ask the team. I also want to give a a bit of a chance for you to also listen to the voices of Nakib and Hajar. Uh, so perhaps Nakib and Hajar, you guys can um briefly introduce yourself to everyone. Oh, who want to go first? <laughs> Aja, the kid? Snacky is here, or maybe I can oh, no. go first? Snacky yes. Snacky is here, yeah. Snacky is here, yeah. Snacky is not here, you can go first. Okay. Well, hi, everyone. So, my name is Hajar. Uh, okay. So, this is just introducing myself uh, in general, right, Atika? Yes, yes. So my study background is quite similar to Atika. Um, I was from law school and then uh, I decided to join Arus because I, since I volunteered during pandemic, I have some sparks to do something that give impact to the society. And I had an opportunity to join Arus through a fresh graduate program. So for me, it's a very good opportunity because I've been loving to do social media stuff and also production, but I did not have this opportunity because of my study background. How can I apply for production team? Being having no certificates in video production and also graphic design. So uh, I always give me this opportunity and now I am part of um, a production team in Arus. Just like Ami mentioned, uh, I have no uh, official certificate, but in Arus, everyone is actually from a uh, different background, but we all have same interests. We, we are into education. What we want is we, we want to give impact to uh, the society. So, and as long as you have the will to learn, you can 
go further. That's what I think. Uh, I fell in love with this role lah. So yeah, um, I'm still learning. If I said uh, when I first entered Arus, I feel like I'm very small in the team because everyone is like very experienced. But in, they they still put trust in me to try, and I think I grow a lot in a year. So yeah, that's from my story. And passing to uh, Nakit. Hey, Nakit is here. Hi, Nakit, you want to briefly introduce yourself to everyone? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Nakit. Yeah, and uh, as you guys know, uh, I'm from the production team in Arus. I'm part of that, uh, part of the team. So, yeah. Uh, uh, I have a background uh, with uh, mass communication and also uh, I got a degree in broadcasting and journalism. So uh, how did I get into Arus, uh, Arus's production team? So um, basically it's the, what they do in here uh, in Arus, like uh, telling stories and having a lot of uh, uh how do i say this involved with students and teachers like what they represent and what do they do here uh got me you know got me in hook lah with them so yeah um when i started i re i really don't have any much experience doing the editing or even shooting videos uh for myself or for my comp uh uh, for any company before and yeah I just learned along the way with my thanks to my team like Amiri uh, who is a really uh, great leader in the team and also Haja, Eli and also Hafiza everyone is uh, sorry everyone is so much uh, uh being supportive with each other we help out each other and we also learn with each other so yeah no matter what we got each other's back and i think mainly it's because uh it's the interest in doing the videos uh, that what uh, that makes me you know eager to learn in doing videos and even have uh, storytelling that's that can inspire uh, people or viewers to watch our videos. So, yeah, I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Naki. All right, so you guys, you guys have uh, 10 minutes. We have 10 minutes window for you guys to ask any questions that have been in your mind. Uh, you can directly ask to uh, Miri and Hajar or Nakib. I will pin them here uh, so you guys can ask any questions. And you can, you can just unmute right away and ask. I will, I will not interfere here. Uh, please take this opportunity. I will only allow you 10 minutes. Okay. All right. I'll back off here. Right, yes. Ask them any question, please. I want to hear first question from you guys. All right, uh, I have a question here. So you were saying just now uh, YouTube uh, is your main reference, right? So could you please briefly explain on how uh, you use YouTube as your guidance? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so mainly uh, when I was uh, starting the team, I, I was very much lacking in skills, the so skills in shooting uh, videos. Uh, in that. So when, when you got, when you talk about shooting videos, uh, I just search how to shoot videos on YouTube. And there's so many things coming up. So I did everything bit by bit. Um, usually when it comes to like a certain project, for example, we want, you want to do shooting, uh, for example, we want to do video editing, say animation on a certain kind of animation. So I would search that specific uh, problem on YouTube and that's where I would learn it. Uh, um, so YouTube is very much, 
I would I'm I'm very grateful to have YouTube. I mean I, I'm I'm born in a in a generation young very lucky lah to have YouTube. But um yeah that's how we usually learn about it. Uh, we learn about concepts as well in terms of storytelling. Um for example there's this thing called a uh, tree act structure. We learn everything on YouTube to sort of uh, understand how should we form a, a story. Um yeah, basically YouTube is 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 our best friend. But we also do some courses and trainings uh, on our own. Uh, which we go for for like uh personal development trainings that that sort of to get us more uh, information hands on and on a personal level. Yeah. All right, we got one question from Kelly. Kelly, you wanna you wanna ask this guys directly? I already uh, chat, uh send a question in the chat. So the question is like, how do you raise fund for your operation? It's the first question and the second question is um what are the core values that hold you together as like very strong team toward the uh the activity and the idea and the project you are doing? So I have two okay. questions. All right. Uh Nakib, Aja, you guys are there. You want to add anything? The first question is how do you raise funds for operations? So we are <laughs> uh, we are not the bosses of the company, but uh, we do um, get funds from sponsors and, and other um I would say for example financial literacy. So financial literacy is called under the umbrella of our academy, we call it fund for life. So fund for life is um funded by FWD Takaful, which is a Takaful company in, in, in Malaysia. So for for example, for that. Uh, we get funds from that, and we also get from uh, Yayasan Hasana for the school. Um, so we get a few from uh, from different organizations to support us as a short social enterprise. Second question is, what was it again? How well, how did you guys bond? Like, how do you guys get into this very good bond between in among each other among members in the team? How do you get to that that? Huh? What is the journey? Okay. Ada aja lagi you want to answer? Uh, uh, yeah. The I think I can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, take it twice. Oh. I think my line is wrong. I think my, I think my, my answer mind. is quite. Sorry. My answer is quite simple. We argue a lot at first. I mean, through projects, we try to improve. Um, We, we do. Uh, post mortem on how we can improve. We always do that and then we try to learn each other's uh work style, working style. So it's not that we get to get along at the first place, it's just it, we get better through projects. I know I think we wanna I mean, I like, like did say about passion. So passion was something is something that is very uh ingrained inside of us. All of us are passionate about what we want to do. So I guess as educators, you guys, I'm sure you guys have come across students who are passionate about learning. And, and when a student is passionate about learning, they learning becomes not, it's like second nature. They, be, they, they are able to learn easily. So for us, we're lucky to be passionate about what we do. Um, but at the same time, uh, yeah, we're just passionate about what we do. And second, how do you identify storytelling through videos is something you want to do. What challenges do you face? Um, so storytelling is, how did you identify story through videos, something you want to do? So challenges that we face when we want to do storytelling is sort of, um, when we want to create a story, we sort of put on a journalist hat. So we have to find out, um, what is the key angle that we want to do. So we usually interview teachers. Honestly, if you, uh, uh, what we usually do when we interview, our interview shoots last for like 20 minutes, but we only include only like. 30 seconds of your interview. So because when we interview, that's how we, we we sort of, we don't have a script when we do it because everything is very documentary style. So when this documentary style is very much, uh, you sort of have to go back and read everything and, and watch everything all over again and then sort of have to transcribe everything and then see the key points that you want to take out. Uh, that's the challenges that we face, but it's also the, 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 the benefit of it is that you get more, a stronger story and a stronger impact.
Uh, guys, one more question. I think uh, the most challenging part is the editing part. Any tips on the editing part? Thank you. Let's hear from Nakib this time. Okay, hi guys. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. All right, cool. Uh, the editing part. Uh, so, oh wow, uh, great question. Because uh, I actually started in Arus, like my editing, uh, video editing is the weakest point for me. I mean, it's the lowest skill I, that I had before uh, uh, when I'm joining uh, Arus at first. So uh, I pick it up like, um uh when uh when i learned a lot uh with uh with the team so we learned together uh doing this uh it started off with doing the uh easy steps lah. uh easy steps uh during uh like just cut and stuff so as i learned i in my free time i usually watch videos from youtube yep again thanks youtube uh so yeah, I learned basic stuff and started off um, started off from there, uh, uh, taking the harder stuff uh, step by step, just taking like baby steps for, for me for myself. So uh, uh, the hard part uh, just came along the way with uh, my team who always pushes me to do much more uh, videos that will look better in the future something yeah i hope it answers your <laughs> great great right i want to take on uh i want you guys to address one more questions uh perhaps divya divya do you want to verbalize your your final question over there so that everyone else can also listen to what you actually um ask definitely so with ai coming in artificial intelligence the work that you do are you seeing any changes it can be good or not so good changes in the work that you do uh, okay so when ai um there's a lot of benefits to it in terms of uh convenience um to edit a one hour edit can become simply 10 minutes 20 minutes so I came across this one video. Um, so we do, for example, we do podcasts. We have a podcast. So podcast is like literally like one hour of shoot, shooting. So I saw this video, the AI simply, it cuts everything for you, you know? It cuts everything and then it simply is automated. But the only problem with that is that the AI doesn't understand your story, how you want to tell it. So there's an emotion, that emotion value that is missing from AI. But... I will understand AI is good in the sense that we can sort of manipulate. I know manipulate is the wrong word to say, but manipulate pictures. So, so for example, when we want to do storyboard, um, for example, we want, um, for example, the skyline of KL, KL at the back. And we only have the skyline of something else, but we can change that. Um, so that's, that's how we would want to use AI, but not to the extent that we want them to control the, our story. Um, yeah. Can I add on? Yep. So this one would be answering to both Aisha and also Divya because uh, basically I'm from a like, completely different background. So I understand your struggle if you are going through, I mean, you have zero background of uh, video editing, but you still want to then, right? I have these difficulties too. It makes me feel overwhelmed. And my team, production team, they use Adobe Premiere a lot. A lot. Because we are editing for key videos. But... If you are like me, you are someone from, you just want to start something with what you have first. Okay, first of all, first of all, you guys have smartphone, right? So best editing apps I can suggest is CapCut. It's the best ever you can use. Lah, because they, uh, for example, if you are recording a uh, just talking video, they can uh, put subtitle for you. They can auto generate the subtitle for you. And the uh, features is also very simple to use. This one uh, actually really helps me to overcome my, my struggles to edit video because uh, for your information, uh, for the main Arus uh, social media, I'm also the, the content creator for it. So instead of uh, also being a part of a production team, I also uh, manage uh, social media. So I need to create content for it. I need to be good in uh, for, 
uh, poster design and also um, video editing. So uh, don't make it complicated. I know you have more things to do instead of learning Adobe. Uh, that, that one, let us do it. I mean, let the professionals do it. For us, we can just use Canva for photo or poster editing is very helpful. Even the free one is very helpful. And for your information, CapCut is also free. And also, uh, yeah, that's for me. And I would say uh, AI is, is not really uh, uh, not a good, uh, it's not something that uh, disturb our our role. It doesn't like complicate our role. I mean, I'm sorry, sorry, how to uh, simplify the, I, I get, uh, it's actually uh, for me, for someone who needs to create captions, AI can help, you know, make the words much more nicer. <laughs> Uh, but uh, there are times we can, I would say our team for documentary, we did not use uh, chat GPT because we want to create a more genuine. AI does not have that genuine touch of creating scripts. So that one, that one is on us. But, and also if you know how to use chat GPT, it can help you to uh, solid, solidize your, your, your storyline. Yeah, it's not really, we, we, it's not really, yeah, sometimes can be good, but don't use it too frequent that it looks like you are copy paste from the chat GPT. That's for me lah. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you, guys. I know there are a few more questions coming in. I love that you guys have been showering this thing with questions. This is what we want. However, uh, with the interest of time, we will not be able to address all. I would like to suggest the team to uh, look into the, our chat. Uh, and uh, address them separately in the chat. We will now uh, move on to our member sharing space. Tonight, we will have a dual sharing space, not just by one, but two members, um, Divya and Yati. Let me just uh, say thank you first to Amiri, Hajar, and Nakib from the uh, Arus Academy, so our production team. Let's give them... Um, a big hand. I know they cannot hear us clapping, but let's just let them see us clapping here. All right. Um, they're not going to leave yet. Don't worry. They will be joining us in our uh, conversation in breakout room in a bit. So if you guys have more questions um, and more um, remarks, then you can share with them later. Right. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Divya and Yeti to do your sharing space right now. The floor is for you guys. Thank you so much, Atika. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Aris Academy. That was really inspiring to know about your work. And like we had so many questions, uh, when we present, we would also love for everyone. If you have questions, you can keep them going in the chat as well. And if at any point you feel that I'm speaking too fast or I am, or you cannot understand me, you can just come off mute and ask me to repeat it. Thank you. I will share my screen. Uh, it's visible, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, namaste everyone. I am Divya Oppal from India. And with, with me, we have Hayati. We are going to talk about a project, a collaboration that we did. Before that, we'll just talk about who we actually are. I started my fellowship with Teach for India. From there, I started a project called Project Soch. What is Project Soch? I will tell you in a bit. I will invite teacher Hayati to tell us something about herself. Hi. Okay, my name is Hayati. I am educator from Klang Vocational College. I was teaching uh, heat ventilation and air conditioning for TVX. So I meet Divya through this uh, GTC se uh, session. So uh, we make collaboration uh, through Divya project. So thank you, Hayati. So what we were doing and how did we go about this? When I was teaching in India, I noticed that many students only thought about their own community and classrooms. What is happening in the world around them, they were not aware. 
they thought if their parents are doing one thing they will grow up and they will do the same thing the only exposure they had to the outside world was through youtube whatever is happening in youtube whatever one side they watch they feel that is the truth of the world so i wanted the kids to have the first hand exposure to the other world what if they can communicate with children across the world i wondered what th- that would be because uh, if uh, that was missing they had a very limiting mindset they had only seen one side of their reality so now we were also thinking there were uh, challenges with communication and this especially was happening when my students first interacted with kids from america and canada when they were interacting with those kids they uh, they were thinking that if someone speaks in english they are higher than us this is colonialism but that was deeply rooted then so i wanted them to understand speaking english does not define your intelligence it is just a medium of speaking which is also very important and with that they, i wanted them to be more culturally aware for this what did we do we had a virtual cultural exchange program when i was doing my fellowship it was in the pandemic era 2020 the kids had to be used to their phones zoom meetings everything so this was advantages for us so what we did students from india and malaysia got together here i would also like to mention about uh, miss hu and mr ganesh from vietnam and uh, nepal respectively we were also collaborating with them but we are going to talk especially about this project we did with malaysia what we wanted the kids to have in this weekly structured design was one they speak in english and second they were making themselves culturally aware and making genuine connection first hand with kids from another nation is hayati you want to take ahead thank you divya so actually um i actually uh accept divya project because i want to give an experience that i believe um when our student is embracing change we can give them uh self improvement so just what when i when i heard story from amri you all of you also have self improvement right so i want to as a teacher i want to give them a uh, self improvement often involve embracing change and stepping out of uh, one comfort zone so i encourage our student we encourage our students to be open to new experiences and challenges as they were to becoming better version of themselves instead of we are, we are teaching them about the discipline as i teach in uh, vocational college such as heat regulation and conditioning so i can give them another opportunity to embrace another challenge uh going through this social exchange so they have to prepare to speak english and make communication with the other students so uh so for the next slide please nipia okay this is what students are saying after we have done six session uh through the projects so um maybe the gram is broken but i think this is is in part this give me uh, a lot of um inspiring so that the words from danish lee uh, hello teacher during the whole session of the program i have learned a lot about english a language influence all the words uh now the indian student have taught me a lot about their cultures and their language too so uh danish lee cannot um cannot going through for this for the all the session because he still working with her with him with her with his father uh but he is the leader of the project so i i actually give uh the project to him so he find another 10 uh 10% uh for the project so i give her i give him to cha- i give him chance apa i give him chances to make uh, to make the the paperwork so 
he also um, he also meet the director and speak about the project. And the other one is Daniel Ramli. So I think Daniel Ramli is a uh, um, I pick the words that um, after after inviting me to participate in a program, and yeah, it is difficult things to hide my feeling when me when me when I have to speak English with them, nervous, shaking when I speak in front of, in front of someone that you even don't know them before this. But he tried to fight thing with a feeling with that feeling. And Alhamdulillah, after that, uh, he actually can speak with confidently. And between the session, I can see that I, my student um, think what is uh, better than before because they are helping each other and they are also encourage um, student, a uh, DVR student to speak with them. So there, there is another thing that I want to highlight here is experience is a good thing to improve our belief. This one is, um, I, I actually believe that when we give experience for our student, uh, their improvement, their self-development, we grow, we grow up. And that one is uh, really important because our field, our education uh, that I get from uh, our minister that said that uh, everyone is clever. There, there are a lot of students that get, get first class, but the first, uh, the first thing that they don't have is that resilient. They don't have that one. So not really uh, good. Um, so as a, as a teacher, we, have, we, we must make sure that they they have to develop themselves. So like Aris Academy, right? So all of you develop yourself, going through all the challenges and growing up until you passionate about your works and you, you, you can go further after this. That's why uh, one, of our, of one of my question before, I just want to know what is your vision after five years, 10 years, so we, when, when we doesn't have any vision, we will be stagnant. So we need to push ourselves and our team to become better after this. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So another one. Uh, another slide, please, Divya. Oh, we have another two minutes. So this is uh, my reflection about the student. Part of student is shy to talk, but at the end of the session, he talked confidently. So from my observation, I look deep proud of themselves. So after that session with Divya, in class, the student wanted volunteers give idea. And as a teacher, I, I also can talk confident, confidently in other global programs. And what we can do is um, we have, we, we should give an opportunity, opportunity for the student to embrace the challenges. So I think that the last one is about the last slide. Okay. So after the after going through the project with Debya, I, I am still wondering what is that I can do for our student in technical and vocational training because my field is uh, TVEC. What is can I give them to embrace their challenges? And nowadays I still arrange a clear vision for our students for their future development. Vision for five years, 10 years, 20 years and above because uh, we are growing older. And when we integrate education, integrate field, we are going to use our physical a lot, but in fifth, in 50 years, is it we can do using we can use our physical? Do you understand what I am what I am uh, asking? Yes. Okay. So uh, the last one is uh, why is it important actually for our student to become culturally aware? 
So I leave uh, the question. This is uh, the question from me and Divya uh, to all the members of GTC. So I would like to, to hear some opinion that give um, ideas uh, for, for us as, as a teachers. That's all I think. Thank you. Okay. Along with that, even if you have any more questions, we would be more than happy to respond to them. For now, I will keep this slide here. Uh, how much time would we have, Atika? Uh, we are, we have already considered the time. We have all the time for uh, member sharing space. Thank you so much, Divya. Thank you so much, Ayati. That was very inspiring. Uh, this is really, really great. Um, so thank you for sharing. I'd love, I, I'd love to just um, highlight a few things that I've listened while I was listening in. Number one is experience is key to improving life and improving yourself. I love that. Why? Because uh, as we go through lessons, as we go through uh, knowledge, I mean, I'm sure every one of us have uh, in one time, at least one time in our life, only learn by reading, only learn by listening to what other people are saying instead of experiencing ourselves. So to improve our belief, to improve ourselves, we must first and foremost experience it by ourselves. So I love this part. And I want everyone to also soak in the final questions that is posed by Divya and uh, Yati. Why is it important for students to become culturally aware? But first, perhaps we can rephrase this a bit. Why is it important for us, for ourselves, to become culturally aware? Because if we, the teachers, if we, the adults, are not culturally aware, how do we believe in such notion and making our students culturally aware when we do not believe in this? So think about how and why is it important to you, to us, to become culturally aware, especially in our world that is so-called borderless nowadays, right? So thank you again, Divya and Yeti. Thank you so much for sharing about your projects and about your reflection. Um, right, now let's move on to our next agenda that is our conversation All right so we talk about learning differently learning something new um pushing through new frontiers right so we will go to breakout room conversation and and this is where the team from RS academy the production team will also experience something new for them experiencing how gtc is being done how a conversation is being done in gtc Right, I will post a few questions about learning differently here. And you guys will take around three minutes to think about what your responses are before I assign you guys to a breakout room. Number one, choose one of your learning journey. We have a lot of different, different learning journey, right? And of course, our learning journey is not ending yet, but you can pick like one part of your learning journey and then share what triggered you to learn and what were your challenges if this is something that has happened in the past or what are your challenges if this is still ongoing right now you know something that triggered you to learn right what happened perhaps oh i've been forced or i i needed to get into the promotion track so i need to learn new leadership skill that's why that's what triggered me to learn new things for example okay and what are your challenges number three what should you do differently and this is not for you to think this is something for your conversation partners to recommend for you after listening to your sharing okay all right so what you need to prepare is just number one and number two i will give you guys around two and a half three minutes to prepare for number one and number two and then I will move you guys to a 20 minutes conversation in the breakout room.
No problem, CD. We'll see you in the next session. Right, there are questions about one of your learning journey. What is learning journey? So one of your experiences in learning. That's what it means by learning journey. All right, I'll give you a few more seconds. All right, so let's head into our breakout rooms. I will give you guys 20 minutes. And I'll see you after 20 minutes. All right, welcome back. All right, as usual, too many stories to tell, too short of a time. It's okay, don't worry. I hope you guys have had a fruitful uh, discussion. Um, you have managed to share your stories across. And uh, I hope this is also a meaningful experience for the production team over at RS Academy as well to experience the conversation GTC way. All right, cool. Now that you have uh, your conversation, um, I would just have some few announcements to make uh, before we close the session tonight. So um, we have a few opportunities uh, open to members of GTC so you can sign up. Uh, as what Hayati and Divya did earlier with sharing space, you too can also do the same. So you can uh, reach out to me and say, I have something that I also want to share uh, to everyone in GTC. So you can do so. It's a 10 minute uh, sharing space. Um, do book your slot uh, for the next sessions. You can also become a member representative, uh, take over some parts of the sessions, like um, how Hema did earlier on. Uh, with the previous session, become a facilitator. We still have two spots available uh, for a facilitator uh, for our upcoming um, activity with uh, students from Fukuoka in August. And for our GTC learning retreat in December, uh, we still have some spots open. So if you are interested, you can reach out to me as well. Um, so uh, this is running all year long. Uh, let's exchange uh, a student exchange program, a cultural exchange program with MEBS Nepal. So you can get the info that uh, by scanning the uh, QR code here and sign up. You can also reach out to me if you have any questions. Update your details, please, on member profile form. Um, you can scan the QR code here to get to the link also in your emails. Uh, share your reflection. What have you learned today or what have what new questions you have uh, from these sessions and connect with us on Facebook. We're on Facebook. It's Global Teacher Conversation. If you share a story, tag us at Global Teacher Conversation. Yeah. All right. Now let's do a quick photo time. I will stop sharing here so that our friend Hema can help us with um, photo. Yes, Kevin. Why are you not in the video, Hema? <laughs> no, I'm not feeling well, so it's okay. Okay, we have a um, few pages. Okay, because I'm using my handphone. Okay, so one, two, three, keep on smiling. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, we go for the second page. Okay, one, two, okay, Roshin done. <laughs> okay, <laughs> one. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, we go for the okay, the last one. Okay, so I'm going to take randomly. Okay, done. Right, thank you, Hema. All right, uh, just a little bit more before we end. So our next session is on 5th of August. That's uh, two weeks from uh, tonight, everyone. So again, it's Saturday night, same time, same day, uh, next two weeks. Uh, do look out for email updates. 
uh, for upcoming sessions. Uh, you can reach out to me, uh, to anyone in the DC. Also, uh, make use of our Telegram group. You can uh, share opportunities, you can share um, grants or anything that you think worth sharing to everyone. And, and say hi to everybody there. With that, I want a bit good night and take care. See you on August 5th. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Matika. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye